self pollination at the end of this lesson you will be able to define self pollination explain about self pollination list out the advantages and disadvantages of self pollination flowers hey friends what comes to your mind when you think of flowers won't it be the fragrance and beauty flowers keep our surrounding fresh and attractive and in turn please our mind leave behind the usual feelings do you know flowers are responsible for the development of a new plant a flower is called as the reproductive unit of a plant the male part of a flower is called as stamen and the female part is called as pistil the male part includes anther and filament the female part includes stigma style ovary and ovules when both male and female parts are present in a flower it is referred to as a perfect flower if a flower has either male or female part it is referred to as an imperfect flower in this flower the tiny particles stick to the anther well they are called pollen grains which are produced by the anther do you want to know what actually happens in a flower when the pollen grains land on the stigma they germinate and grow through the style where the pollen grains fuse with the ovules of the flower forming the seed which later develop into a new plant the transfer of pollen from the anther to the stigma is called as pollination this pollination results in the formation of various end products such as grains vegetables and fruits there are two types of pollination namely self pollination and cross pollination self pollination does not require external agency to transfer the pollen grains while cross pollination requires external agencies like wind or insects to carry the pollen grains from one plant to another in this lesson we will discuss about the self pollination in detail self pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of the same flower or genetically similar flower of the same plant there are two kinds of self pollination they are autogamy and gynogamy autogamy when pollen grains move from the anther to the stigma inside the same flower it is called as autogamy it is also known as xenogamy this kind of pollination occurs in a bisexual flower examples include rice wheat pea etc gynogamy this type of pollination occurs in the plant which has several flowers on a single stem when the pollen grains from one flower deposits on the stigma of another flower located on the same plant it is called as gynogamy examples include orchis mascula platanthera chlorantha etc a self pollinated flower commonly exhibits one of the following adaptations for secure pollination that is bisexuality or hermaphroditism cleistogamy homogamy bisexuality or hermaphroditism self pollination occurs easily in bisexual plants since they have both male and female units in the same flower cleistogamy represents the characteristic of a flower where pollination and fertilization takes place in an unopened flower such type of flowers is called as cleistogamous flowers such flowers are bisexual inconspicuous very small colorless and do not secrete nectar or honey common examples include beans peas wheat rice and groundnut homogamy this is a condition where both the male and female organs of a flower mature at the same time in such flowers the anther and the stigma bend or fold to attach together some of homogamy plants are vinca mirabilis potato and sunflower position of anther in certain plant species 
The anthers surround the stigmas in such a way that self-pollination occurs without any hindrances. In some plants, the flower petals enclose the stigma and stamens in such a way that allows self-pollination. Examples include black gram, green gram, chickpea and soybean. The following mechanism occurs in the plants that prevent self-pollination. Protogeny. It represents the phenomenon in which the male part matures before the female part or vice versa. This prevents the contact of pollen grains and stigma of the same flower. Morphological Sometimes, in the imperfect flower, the anthers are present below stigma. In such flower, self-pollination will not occur. Self-incompatibility In some flowers, stigma may reject the pollen of the same plant. In some others, the stigma prevents the germination of pollen grains. Thus, preventing the growth of pollen tube. Genetic consequences of self-pollination Self-pollination leads to the increase of homozygosity, that is, the presence of same genotype of the two identical alleles of the plant, thereby increasing the population of same plants. The populations of self-pollinated plants are mostly homozygous, but heterozygous is also possible, in which genotypes of two different alleles are exhibited. Thus, the purpose of breeding methods is to develop homozygous varieties of plants. Let us now discuss the advantages of self-pollination. The offspring preserves the parental characters indefinitely, since genotypes of the same plant are involved during self-pollination. As a small quantity of pollen is sufficient for self-pollination, it is very economical during plant breeding. Since anthers are present close to stigmas, there is less chance for failure of pollination. Flowers do not depend on external agents for pollination. Less wastage of pollen grains when compared to cross-pollination. Let us now discuss the disadvantages of self-pollination. Continuous self-pollination leads to weakening of progeny. No possibility for new species or plant varieties. Quality of seeds produced through self-pollination is comparatively lesser than cross-pollination as they are more susceptible to diseases. New addition or subtraction of plant characters is possible in self-pollination. Summary In this lesson, you have learned that self-pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of the same flower or genetically similar flower of the same plant. Two kinds of self-pollination are autogamy, gaitanogamy.